Yo, hey folks, it's uh, Kevin, Big K Horror, uh, and this is just going to be a video about like a life update, just general crap crammed into one video. Um, so, <clears throat> well, for starters, yeah, uh, things, uh, it's the beginning of August already, so things have been looking up for me since the past month, as far as like, um, like, my foot's no longer injured, uh, like, I had, this, I had this fall, like, I'm one of these people that, like, if I'm out in my driveway, and I see someone driving by, or walking by, or doing their cardio by my house, and they, like, see me, I will, like, dart into the driveway, you know, or dart into the garage, hide, whatever, I'll, I'll just, I'll run to the garage and hide until they pass by, and then go back out doing what I'm doing, um, so, <laughs> Uh, in June, I had this incident where this uh, guy and girl were jogging by, and they saw me, and I tried to quickly lunge from where I was into the garage with my music, my MP3 player, and like a, you know, like a drink and all that, and then I just ended up kind of like tripping on myself and tumbling and hurt my foot, and it, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> okay, and then, like... Anxiety is a bitch, but this was the bitchiest part of it, you know, I've ever really had to deal with. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so now my foot is good to go. Uh, I've been on, like, this really strong, um, it's not pa like pain pills or whatever. Pain pills actually don't really do much for me, but this was, like, a very strong ibuprofen. You know, it's called, like, uh, Lotril or something, I don't remember, but, oh my god, that knocked out the pain in my foot. And my uh, ankle too. And now I'm back to good. About to start doing cardio outside again. It's been about like three years since I've done that. And I like, you know, you can't look at me right now and tell, you know, pudgy face and all that and body. But I mean, I, I used to weight lift every day and like jog about three to four times a week. It was addictive. And uh, fortunately, uh, uh, due to some post uh, trauma that I went through and post trauma stress disorder and all that, I'm where I'm at right now where I can't really go in public a lot much, especially the gym. I really don't have the huge funds to or to order a home gym, so I'm kind of like just doing my thing right now until I'm comfortable around to be around people or be seen by people in the street and do my cardio, which is about right now. I, I right now I'm, 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 I'm comfortable enough to go on the street and do my cardio with my music and I don't really give a fuck about anything going on right, you know? So hopefully we can see that, that, uh, goes through. And, um, eventually when I like do enough cardio, like maybe for a few months, I'll start losing some weight and I'll be cool to kind of maybe join a gym, but that's just all here to stay for now. All right. But one thing about my moods, I will say, is, uh, you know, a year, uh, less than a year ago, less than a year ago, I was put on um, um, lithium, which I couldn't, I didn't like at all, it made me feel horrible, I started getting a lot more weight, um, but that's only because at the time, I couldn't afford being on the medication my psychiatrist wanted really to put me on, which was uh, Abilify, and the current, the old uh, uh, health insurance I had when I afford that, but now that I'm on Medicare, I can afford it, and it's not like two hundred dollars just to meet the um, deductible or whatever. I mean, for just a, a one month medication, it's like five, six, four, five, six dollars, and uh, you know, woo, yay! And for real, Abilify, as you see, yeah, Abilify, the real deal has done a lot of change for me already. Now, I could be wrong, you know, I could be like, I probably just like took a hydroxy cut one day and like felt great, who knows, but I think the Abilify really has been doing a lot for me, and I'm almost been on it for almost about a month now, and I noticed a big change in me, like I, like I said, I, I, I'm the type of guy that goes outside in the driveway and has to dart back into the garage to hide from people, alright, but now, I'm not really hiding from people so much as, well, it's not about so much that. When I wake up, I feel like I'm ready to go pursue my day. Um, I've done so many projects this past week that I have not done, let's say, in the past year. Like, I've entirely cleaned up my room. I've rearranged my bedroom. I took all the DVDs, and when I say all my DVDs, I mean a shitload. I'm, I'm a big horror movie collector, so I have a lot of movies that were, like, out of their cases. The cases were all over the floor and stacks and stuff, like, unorganized, unalphabetized. And guess what I did? I put all the DVDs back there, alphabetized, organized, everything. And the subgenres and sections I have them in. And 
And that was begun tanking. Then I had like, let's say, all my Fangoria magazines. Uh, that's like a, over over ten a decade's worth of Fangoria magazines. Fangoria is a horror movie entertainment magazine. I had about over a decade's worth lying around, and I you know put them all back in chronological order and their places. And as you know, this is just a a small portion of my room right here. But I got my whole entire room is just filled with horror shit. But Needless to say, I reorganized my room, rearranged things, whatever, and every night I've just been doing the project. I haven't done this in a long time, so it's kind of like, I feel like I got some life back in me again. But then again, this just could be, I'm manic right now. With uh, being borderline personality disorder and, of course, bipolar disorder, uh, one being a mood, one being a, um, I'm sorry, behavioral, uh, one being a mood, one being a uh, behavioral, you know, thing, uh, like, I tend to have, you know, my highs and lows, and on, along those highs, I get manic, and sometimes I just, I get very energetic, I get very creative, where I want to do things, and I actually complete them, and, but they, they go in small spurts, and then the rest of the time, I'm just empty all the time, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I just, I've been manic, uh, maybe, but also I think this medication is kind of making me feel better like that, you know, um, some people say manic's a bad thing, I don't, I don't think so, um, the only bad thing I think about being manic is this. Either I can get too high of a manic face and be outraged by everything and be the eggshell guy, or say the only other negative thing is like when people run into me and talk to me, they think like, like, dude, did you just do a line of coke? And I'm like, yeah, fuck you, dude. No, I'm just naturally hyper like this. You know, or I'm passionate about stuff. I'm very hyper. But anyway, uh, so... You know, but I think Abilify has evened me out to where I just feel like, you know, doing stuff. And that's that's a good thing for right now. But then again, like all medications, a trial and error, and it could be just for a few time for a while, and then it, I relapse back to being um, a hermit. I don't know. We'll see. But I I, I want to get these cheeks sunken back in. I want to fit back into some of the older clothes, but still wear some of the newer clothes. But you know, I I want to make change. I'm ready for change. You know, I think that's that's brewing. It's like. You know the up upcoming season to a uh, to a very uh, suspenseful finale from the past season. You want to see change, and that's how I feel right now. I want to see fucking change. So anyway, Abilify, I thank you. Yeah. Anyway, so next up, uh, a couple of Blu-rays I got this past month that I think are noteworthy. I want to mention um, first being obviously you know I saw it in the theater. I already did a v YouTube video review and I liked it. So that's uh, Jonathan Levin's, uh, Levine's, uh, Warm Bodies. Um, I just, uh, actually yesterday did a review of his, uh, directorial debut, All the Boys Love Mandy Lane, so check that review out sometime of mine, but, which is actually one of my favorite horror films of all time. All the Boys Love Mandy Lane, that is. Uh, one of the best slash of flicks ever. Anyway, uh, the next one is by the Soska Sisters, who also go by the Twist Twins, and that is American Mary. Now, this was a Canadian little piece of cinema, a slice of horror cinema that just recently came out. Sorry, Catherine Isabel of Ginger Snaps. And also Freddy vs. Jason. And she was also in Disturbing Behavior and, and Bones. A bunch of other movies. But, uh, yeah, she returns back to like her roots here as... A, a surgical student who gets herself in a bind financially with her life and um, both with a rape revenge angle and then she realizes she can make money with her surgical skills working in the back alley areas of doing back alley body modification and it all converges into one thing meaning rape revenge and body modification think about it just think boom this movie and I think this movie was remarkable and awesome excellent now some things about it was I noticed that uh, once you walk, probably watch more than once, you'll pick up on things. Whereas the first time you see it, some things will seem so abrupt toward the end. But then the second time you see it, you see little hints here and there scattered. So it's kind of really cool how it's kind of laid out. But that's American Mary starring Catherine Isabel. Highly recommended. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying it's the greatest film ever made, but you know, for all the end of, like for all the crap coming out from Hollywood into the mainstream theaters, this is a breath of fresh air right here, you know? And the only reason I say, and a lot of people may not like it, is because I read some reviews on IMDb and other bullshit sites or whatever, but I liked it a lot. And I thought, uh, and especially the Sausage Sisters, the Twist Twins, they show a lot of promise in the horror genre with this, you know? So I look vastly forward to what they do next. All right. 
Um, and the next the Blu-ray I want to showcase is actually a Scream Shout Factory re-release that's very uh, well done. A well done re-release, but also the film's well done itself. And that is A Town That Dreaded Sundown. Alright? <laughs> is that the poster right over there? But anyway, um, I love this film. Very fucking creepy film, and it's about fucking time this came out because it never came out on DVD. It, it went straight to whatever VHS is in the U.S. it existed on to this in 2013. So we've never had a DVD of this film ever. Ever. So, you know, congrats. Screen Factory and Shaw Factory for releasing this. You did an excellent job. All right. Next up. One random little thing I want to say. I've watched movies, old school movies, and a lot of movies I have for a long time, you know, in my collection. I watch them over and over and over. But one I recently rewatched that I haven't watched in a while that I realized, man, this movie is... It went from being just kind of... Yeah, that's cool. To being like, yeah, that's fucking cool, you know? So, and that is uh, the 1984 slasher film. I think that was filmed in South Carolina. It could be North Carolina. I'm not sure. It's one from one of the Carolinas. And that is none other than, boom, the mutilator. Okay? You know, by axe, by sword, by arrow, bye bye, or whatever. Yes, by sword, by pig, by axe, bye bye. All right. Awesome cover, awesome tagline. Awesome title, you know, an awesome slasher movie. And this is the uncut version. You know, don't watch the, the cut version, but the uncut version from Best Drawn Video. This VHS, you know. Anyway, but, um, for, and this has never came out on DVD or Blu-ray either. Just VHS, baby. And still on VHS, it's still a winner. Still a winner. All right, so as a slasher movie fan to another slasher movie fan, Give this one a chance. If you've already seen it once long before, give it another chance. Especially, I mean, the uncut version with the gore and the splatter intact. And it's, boom, worth it. All right? Let me go later. Okay, so past that, um, I want to mention a book I recently got that has become a, independent, that, a newly released independent horror film, indie horror film that's making the circuits right now. All right, but it was originally a book, too. So I haven't seen the new indie horror film, so I can't contest, but I know from the trailers it looks amazing. And every review I read is that it's amazing. But that is this fiction book called Found. All right? Okay? The book and the movie both, okay? It's it's what you call a coming-of-age, a young coming-of-age story meets horror. It's about a young uh, sixth-grade boy, 12-year-old, whatever, who's a horror movie fanatic like the rest of us, you know, the rest of us horror geeks out there, who, like, spends his days watching horror movies and looking at special effects and gore, until he realizes his older brother, who's an older teenager, um, out of high school, I believe, who um, actually starts collecting people's heads, people's severed heads in a fucking bowling ball bag in his closet. So while his brother's gone, he goes and looks at each head each different day in a bag, and it sets up the whole story about how he starts realizing his brother's a serial killer, and he's got an abusive family with an abusive mom and dad toward their own abuse. You know, not the typical, like, physical abuse, but just emotional abuse. Um, and the lead character, like I said, the 12-year-old boy who's dealing with this, he's also a very bullied kid at school. Like, very bullied. Very picked on. And uh, everything all comes to the one fucking boil at the end, and it's, like, terrifying. Well, anyway, the supposedly the new indie film picks up on that a lot, and I guarantee y'all, look up the indie movie, and it's just filmed, it was made, I think, 2012, 2013, whatever, found, okay, with a period after it, trailer, teaser, whatever, trailer, and you'll see it, and I guarantee this movie looks like one to fucking watch, but this book, so far, from what I'm recognizing, is one to read, and I love it. And it's dark, and it, it and and it, it recalls every part of my painful adolescence. Every part of my painful adolescence is in this book, except for having a, a serial killer older brother. But that notwithstanding, all the other literal things in this is true. And uh, so I just wanted to pass it out. Go check it out. Google or I mean YouTube found period trailer, and you'll see this the trailer to this uh, upcoming indie film. All right. Last but not least, uh, there's these books from 94 before I went to 8th grade that I found at Walden Books and B-Dalton Bookseller back in the day because I was a big Fear Street reader and Terror Academy and Nightmare Hall and all this bullshit. 
Um, but these were specifically Friday the 13th Jason Voorhees novels. Well, sort of Jason Voorhees novels. Uh, they go by, you know, the Cam Crystal Lake novels. And it's uh, Mother's Day, Jason's Curse, The Carnival, and Road Trip. All right? Now, these books written by author Eric Morse. Um, these books deliver even sometimes in spades more so than the actual movies themselves, especially the later entries. But pretty much these are each four individual stories all connected together, but they involve the mother's talking head, uh, the hockey mask, and each individual in each four books is possessed by the hockey mask to kill a bunch of people, and it's fucking awesome. So it's not exactly Jason Voorhees, but it's people possessed as Jason, literally, and, like, I'm talking about with, like, just wearing the mask, killing, having, like, uh, machetes grow out of your hand, like, just crazy as shit. But, um, the point of me bringing this up is, I recently found out uh, that, uh, well, I already knew it existed, but I recently found it again on YouTube, youtube.com, that Mother's Day, the first book, which is a fucking awesome. So if you're a Friday the 13th film fan, especially old school Friday the 13th, I'm not talking about the remake, I'm not talking about Jason X and Jason Goes to Hell, I'm talking about old school Friday the 13th from the Paramount early 80s years. Boom, check this out. It's called Friday the 13th Mother's Day, and it's on YouTube. It was a like uh, independent indie horror film, but it's pretty much like its own standalone Friday the 13th sequel, whatever. But it's pretty much about... um. This guy who gets, he finds the mask in this box in the woods, becomes possessed by Jason, and what's in the box is the mother's head. Jason's mom said, uh, ordering him to kill everyone. And there's a group of kids, new, a new crop of kids, who go out to the woods to the deserted Camp Crystal Lake layer, to the, uh, to the deserted Camp Crystal Lake grounds to do their own camping. And, you know, and it involves the, the heroes are the sister and brother duo, Billy, uh, Billy Boone. Um, I think, uh, Let's see, Kelly Boone is the sister. I'm not too sure, but anyway, the sister continues on the second story, Jason's Curse, but this one was made into a movie, and I guarantee y'all, it's it's uh, the trailer's on YouTube, but so is the movie in different parts, like part one out of eight, part two out of eight, part three, you know, whatever. But it's um, Mother's Day, Friday the 13th, Mother's Day, and I believe that even has this picture on it. I don't know, but anyway, I just want to give that shout out to those movies and those things. So, um, life is looking good for me. I'm getting things done, and horror is uh, rocking right now, so life is good. That's all I got.